Developers? Oh, you guys scare the shit out of me. You guys are really here? There's an advanced track over there. Anything, anyone else? Artists? Artists, excellent. Writers? You know, I did a talk in WordCamp Phoenix a couple years ago, and I asked who everybody was, and I excluded the writers, and they were pissed. <laughs> they were so mad. They were mad that, that I left them out. So I've learned that. So here we go. Okay. So if there's anything I say or whatever, make my mom happy. My hashtag, uh, my uh, Twitter handle is grtaylor2. Hashtag for WordCamp, WordCamp Sacramento is WCSAC. So let's get going. So content in 2015. We have writing. We have photography. We have videos, podcasts, SlideShare, uh, wikis, Blab, Meerkat, Periscope. Ebooks, white papers, social, different stuff, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, on and on and on, Instagram. These are simple. Remember when creating content was simple? Remember when it was easy? Remember when all we had to do is press publish and call it good? Anybody remember those days? Like we press publish. Okay, first of all, not everybody press publish. How many people wrote blog, write blog posts and sit on that shit for a while? <laughs> There they are, up down there. We all do that, you know what I mean? But nothing good happens with WordPress until you press publish, right? But back then, all we did was, we press publish, and that stuff went out to the world, and then we could kind of walk away. We could let it sit, we could let it marinate, we could let it do whatever we wanted to do, and not pay attention to it, but welcome to the future, that no longer works. Now we have to do some work around our content, and what we have to do is, we have to make sure that it's seen. We have to make sure it's good. We have to measure it. We've got to actually work at it now. Before we didn't have to work at it, we pressed publish. It went out to the world, and that's what happened. So now we've entered the new age of content, as I call it. So before we get going, and before we go way down on this track, and you know, we talk about marketing, content marketing, and different tools and whatnot. You know, these are. I always talk about the three goals of content. You know. The three goals of content are super important because you have to know what you're doing before you do it or else it's not going to work, right? And by the way, if anybody has questions while I'm talking, let's just, just raise your hand. Let's, let's address them while we're going. I don't want to talk at you. I want to have a discussion. So just, just let me know. So my three goals of content are creating sub, cre becoming a subject matter expertise through your content and having it available for search. Creating a community for your product, service, or brand, or conversion. Those are the three goals that I try to try to achieve with any piece of content. Any goals missing? Anything? Am I missing anything here? Value. Value. Okay, that's one thing. Anything else? Usable. Usable. You guys are smart. Everybody. You, typically, somebody always says. Making money, generating revenue. How come that's not up there as a goal? You know, exactly. So I always say generating revenue is not a goal. It's a byproduct of meeting your goals. That's right. So if we can consider it that way and frame generating revenue, because we all want to generate revenue. I mean, we all want to achieve these. But once we start doing that, especially conversion community, you know, what we end up doing is then the revenue starts coming in. And then what we end up doing is all the good stuff really, really starts to happen. So, so where should we start? This is a big, big topic. And uh, so let's start with this. You know, you are now your own media company. All of you guys, how many people represent companies or blog blog for your own company or create content? Let's not say blog because that's all. What's that? Fail to blog for your own company. There you go, right? Well, that's one thing, right? Doesn't that suck, right? Do you have clients you blog for? No. Okay. Well, no, I, I don't. That's I was going to say. Don't. How many of you create content for clients? Yeah, there we go. I mean, you're a media company now. And if you're representing your own company, your own brand, you are a media company. And it's easier now to do that than ever before because of all of those tools that I mentioned in the very, very beginning. So knowing that and knowing that you are a media company, you know, a couple of things. You control the narrative. You control your own brand, your client's brand. You control the narrative and you start that conversation. And by doing that, 
if something should happen, and if there's any disconnects or uh, misperceptions or anything like that, you can correct the facts. And how powerful is that? How powerful is that to passively correct the facts of something that is not, you know, that's inaccurate or uh, maybe the perception is off for some for the brand, the, the product, the agency, personally, you know? More importantly, you're a storyteller. You know, brands now need to tell stories. We need to tell stories about our products, our services, who's the hero in it? You know, the client's the hero, the product helps them become the hero, right? And then what ends up happening is, it's, it's a better engagement at that point. You're not just talking out and saying, me, 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 me. It's, this is how this helped them. This is how this, you know, made them famous, made them money, made them, you know, super whatever. So, and when, when you do that, you know, you need to know your audience. You need to know who you're talking to, who your demographic is, whether or not there's a specific persona that you're speaking to, whether or not they're, you know, because once you do that, you can control the voice and you can control the narrative like we were talking about. It. And, when, and if you know the audience, you'll also know what story needs to be told. Like, how powerful is that? Like, we never had any of that before. When you press publish and called it good, we never even thought about any of this stuff, right? Unless, I don't know, somebody did and you guys are way ahead of your time. You know? So, what story do you want to tell? You know, here it is. You know, you're able to tell a story and push out the information, disseminate the information that is important to help you meet those three goals. And most importantly, more importantly, is what story needs to be heard. And a lot of that happens when you're, you know, creating community. You know, when you're trying to wrap, bring people together and rally them around a product, service, a cause, and whatnot. So here's a question. Once you produce the content, who owns the story? What's that? Your audience. Who owns it? We're only the catalyst right. to the story. That's one part. And somebody else say something? Everybody has a stake in the ownership of it. You know, and everybody's perception and everybody's story when it comes to a brand or when it comes to anything like that is going to be a little different. You know, let's, my company, for example, my story for the company as a founder is very different than my employee's story. My first employee has a different story than the two, two through six, right? Then my clients have their own story for the brand. All those things need to work together, but we all kind of own the story. And once we realize that, we're able to craft the story and make it powerful and, in, in, and help us move towards those goals. I always keep going back to those goals because that's really what we're all working towards. So marketing's no longer about the stuff you make, but the stories you tell says Seth Godin, so if he says it, it's not. Right, right. Anybody heard of that guy before? Oh, yeah. yeah? All right, cool. Just, just, it's early, making sure you guys are awake. When we're doing that, you know, we'll plan accordingly. We'll make sure that we're putting it out there for the right, in the right places. It's important to execute. I really believe in the velocity of the idea. Uh, velocity of the idea to me is Get something in your head, get it out there, publish it, give it to the world, let's see how good it is, right? It's either, in my own head, my ideas are either the greatest thing ever or the shittiest thing ever. <laughs> you know, there's never any kind of, there's no gray there, ever. But when you're, when you're able to give it to the world, they're gonna tell you really. And then what you can do is you can start crafting that idea and you can start working with that idea to make it work for your audience. So I always think that you know a half-baked idea, a half-baked idea executed is better than an idea just sat on and shelved and you know not discussed among people. So also think about how helpful is your content? Are you helping people? What what are you doing? Who are you serving with this content? Are you serving yourself? When I started blogging, I started blogging Jesus, what is this? 2015? Maybe 2004, 2005. And I wrote all these amazing posts. These posts are great. And I wanted to impress all the other bloggers that I read. And you know what? They suck. <laughs> it was horrible, right? 
Who's, who's an avid blogger here? Okay, Chris, I'm going to pick on you because I read your blog all the time. So, when you started blogging, what was the point of starting? To help some of my customers. To be helpful. And when you start with that in mind, and when you start with helping other people, you're always, your content is going to be that much better. It's going to be that much, it's going to be stickier. It's going to be passed on, you know. But, could, but you'll have to remember, and a client of mine says this, you're competing against everything on the internet, including cute puppy videos. <laughs> How the hell are we going to compete with cute puppies? <laughs> right? Look at us. I mean, I know I can't. So. Another thing to talk about is viral content versus evergreen content. Everybody understand what evergreen content is? So evergreen content is content that's sort of timeless. It's content that you can write three years ago, four years ago, tomorrow, that stays the same and stands the test of time. Viral content, we all know what that is, right? That goes to cute puppies, right? Everybody wants, you know, how do you, you know, you go to Fiverr, you know, we'll sell you a viral video for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like you can't, one, only one of these you can plan for. Which one can you plan for, viral or evergreen? Evergreen. You know, and if the more of your content that's evergreen and can stand the test of time, the more helpful it's going to be. And one of the things that you have to do with every single piece of content is you need to measure everything. How many people, okay, how do I say this? How many people are Google Analytics addicts? <laughs> Oh, uh, you guys are not ashamed to raise your hand. I like that. I mean, you, how how often are you in your analytics? Well, for my site, maybe once a week, but for my clients, all the time. What's all the time? Like Too every big. other day. Every other day? Yeah. Okay. There's still hope for you. You're not an addict yet. <laughs> <laughs> there are the people that I know who are in their analytics every goddamn hour. They're measuring everything, and it's great. Yeah, <laughs> and it's great, and it's one of those things that. You have to measure everything, because if you don't measure everything, you don't know what's working and what's not. And this is what I always tell clients. Whatever can be published can be measured. We can measure, we can measure everything nowadays. You know, you can put an event tag, event tracking tag on a, on a YouTube video, or you put an event tracking tag on any kind of conversion button. And what you measure conversion, you measure the goals versus the metrics. You measure how much money that could be worth to you. you know, what, and also, whatever is published needs to be measured. Because if we don't measure it, we don't know what's working. And then I always subscribe to the marketing philosophy of review, refine, repeat. So review, refine, repeat to me is look at your analytics, review how your, the content has worked, review how you know hits or you know whatever me metric is important to you, refine that. How do you make that better? And go and do it again. And do more of what works and less of what doesn't. You know, I mean, that, that sounds pretty simple, right? How often, I mean, I'm caught up in it. You know, I spend a lot of time doing stuff that doesn't work. And I do it over and over and over until I dig in my analytics and I say, geez, those are 20 hours I'm not going to ever get back. <laughs> you know? So review, refine, repeat. Super, super important. Super, super important. Whatever you can create, you can post to WordPress. Here we go. Now we're talking about WordPress. Fine. <laughs> what you guys came for? Did someone say yay? <laughs> I said, yeah, why is that? So I like it. All right. <laughs> Whatever you can create, you can post to WordPress. And WordPress is a platform, but what are the tools? So here we go. Let's talk about the tools now. Podcasting. Super important, valuable, new media. We're really on the second boom of podcasting. You know, podcasts were, when they first started, you know, they, they, were, they, they were a little cumbersome. They were hard to... They're to download, you had to get it to your iPod, you had to do this or that. Now that smartphones are so there, so everybody has a smartphone, almost everybody has Bluetooth in their car, you know, you can consume that content easy. And so podcasting is one of the biggest ones. How many podcasts are in here again? Handful? So anybody want to start a podcast? Anyone thinking about it? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Nice. Nice. So, it's an easy way to get your message, your brand out there, and to, to show everybody how you're a subject matter expert, expert. 
But I want you to know you are competing for people's attention again. So how many anybody know how many downloads serial podcasts had in 2015? I don't know the answer. I was hoping someone else did. <laughs> anybody know? Uh, let's just say a lot. So you have to remember when you start this, you're not serial. You don't have the backing of This American Life and NPR. You know, you are you in your home office or your office, and you are, you know, just starting out. So this is the way I had the, the music industry explained to me once, and I think it goes to podcast that serial and This American Life gets all the downloads, and that's you right there. That's the rest of the world, so, so good luck. You know, one time I was, uh, I guess, work camp Vegas, and someone said, "Here's a chart of everybody who makes music in the in who makes money in the music industry." And the whole pie was one color and a little sliver. And I said, "The whole pie is the black eyed peas, and the sliver is everybody else." <laughs> so, quick produ production tools to produce a podcast is you can use iMovie, you can use Skype, you can do it straight from your iPhone. Uh, I like to use Adobe Audition. You know, and it doesn't once you get rolling with it. You know, and you get used to producing the podcast, you can really minimize your time. You get down to it. You get some templates. You know, you get some uh, good workflow. Broadcast tools that I've used before that embed nicely into WordPress is Lisbon and Podbean. Uh, of course, for the video podcast, you can use YouTube or any of that stuff, too. Uh, you always want it syndicated to iTunes, and then you can bring people back to your site. Whatever you end up doing, and whenever you have... I always encourage people to have good show notes, create a blog post, post it in there, have good show notes, link to the guests, link to the topics, link out to any additional information. Uh, I've been on some podcasts where they ask me, you know, some of my favorite books, you know, the link out to that. Just anywhere that people get more information about what you're talking about and, and everything else. Video, you know, video is another great format content that we use nowadays. So th there are a couple of forms of video. The show that we do for Marketing Press TV is a quick hitting show. It's about 60 to 90 seconds, maybe three minutes at the longest. We want to go and give some knowledge and people can go and use that knowledge and take it out into their daily uh, business life right away. Uh, there are longer format shows and a lot of times you know, those are done through Google Hangouts or Skype, like uh, water cooler is an hour. It's an hour, right, Chris? Uh, 30, minutes. 30 minutes. It's 30, It's an hour of the show setup. So yeah, it's a 30 minutes that runs live. That's broadcasted to the to the website. It's broadcasted out to YouTube, and it's embedded. You know, so the, the video workflow that I end up using is a create the video. I like to edit the video in iMovie just because I have that available to me. And it's quick, down, dirty, and easy now that I kind of have my intros and my outros, the bumpers, done. Uh, I'll publish the video to YouTube. I'll end up writing a blog post. And I'll make sure that everything is linked in both the YouTube description and on my post. And then I'll kind of plan a social broadcast around that so that we can, figure, so we can start bringing people in. Because it's one of those situations. If a, what do they say? If a tree falls in the middle of a forest, no one hears it. Did it really happen? Well, if you publish a video to YouTube and you don't tell anybody, you know, nobody's going to ever know about it. So, you know, a social broadcast and a broadcast strategy is just as important as getting all the content created. Photography is another great way to draw people in new media. You can tell a great brand story through photos. Uh, there's some brands that I like to follow, like uh, Lakai, they make uh, these bracelets. You know, people tell their brand stories through the Live Lakai hashtag, and it's really easy to embed into your WordPress site. You can get a lot of the users. You can get a lot of people, you know, following you. You can get a lot of people interested in the brand. You can really, really tell a great story. You know, a lot of restaurants do this really well. Everybody loves taking food and photos on Instagram. I swear to God, my Instagram feed is skateboarding, music, and food. But I, there's really nothing else. And maybe cute dogs every once in a while. So I always say, you know, when it comes to photography, you know, what's the best camera to tell your story? Anybody know? The one you have on you. The one you have on you. Excellent. The one you have with you is the best thing to use. Don't worry. You know, everybody used to get hung up before they would publish anything or shoot photos. Like, what kind of DSLR should I get? What kind of lens should I use? Who cares? 
Use your iPhone. I mean, we record our marketing press TV videos with my iPhone now. I just put it on a tripod and I just talk, or I'll put it in a suction cup like a like an Uber driver, and I'll just do it while I drive. Something like that. It, creating content is difficult, and if you don't schedule it, you're not going to do it. So I like to schedule it, you know, just like I'd schedule any other business function. And if, and if you don't do that, it's not going to get done. So make it easy on yourself. Don't worry about these big elaborate production, you know, these big elaborate lights and you know, blah blah blah. Make sure it looks good. Make sure it sounds good. Create it. Move on. So, publishing tools or photos, of course, of course, Instagram, Flickr, Facebook's great. You know, you can you do a lot of, uh, you can aggregate a lot of, you can aggregate your photos to your WordPress site using hashtags. We do that with the marketing press site. We also built, uh, I built one for my dog, Adventures with Joey the dog. It's just kind of fun, you know. It's just fun, and you're able to then tell a story through photos on your WordPress site. Also, photos the easiest way, the easiest media to curate user-generated content. So, user-generated content. If you get other people to work with your hashtags, you get other people to post that stuff. That is priceless. So, I always think creating user-generated content like mine for gold. It's elusive, but very valuable. So if you can get other people to post your brand story for you, again, you don't control your brand story. You own a part of it. They own another part of it. So that's it's super elusive, super valuable. So I would encourage that whenever you can. On the flip side, be careful. <laughs> choose a good hashtag. You don't want to choose a super generic one and, ha and end up curating photos that are inappropriate or things that hurt your brand. So some of the new Twitter tools that we mentioned before, you know, can all be embedded into your into your WordPress site, and it's a great way to keep conversation going. It's a great way to, you know, tell everybody you're an expert to help and help the audience. Periscope, Meerkat. Wow, anybody use Periscope or Meerkat? Here, couple hands, couple hands, couple hands. You guys like it? Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that crazy? Everybody's like. Eh, I've never, I, I know one guy that's super crazy about it, uh, but uh, everybody else is just kind of ambiguous about it. It's like, I don't know, anybody else use Blab? I love, what do you think of Blab out over there? I'll, I feel like I'm ignoring you guys, I'm sorry, I'm just here. Yeah, it's, I think it's fantastic. It's conversational, right? It's real-time conversation. Like, my problem with Periscope and Meerkat is, while I like it, it was always this kind of weird, right? It's like, yeah, you're talking, and you're reading comments, or you're, I don't know, hearts are flying all over the place, and they like stuff, and it's just like, it's just weird. Blab is, you know, you got up to four people, right? On the blab, four people on the channel, four people on the broadcast. Four people on, camera. on camera, right, right. You can so you got four people on camera in one room talking at the same time, all from their phone or their desktop, and that's all embeddable. And you can embed that live stream into in, into your WordPress site. It's fantastic for conversations. It's fantastic for things like uh, Word, Word, WordPress meetups. It would have to be great for that. How do you use Blab? It's the best platform to make podcasts in the world. All right. I've already figured out. I got a course I'm just launching, and it's because they already know. Here, let me plug it for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go to uh, uh, netcasting101.com. Netcasting101.com. How to create a podcast with Blab. Yeah, it's the best. It's easy, and the sound is so good. Yeah. It, it's easy, sound is good, and it's a conversation. Right? It's, it's, I, I like it. I like it. It's like a, it's sort of like a barroom conversation among buddies <laughs> with other people eavesdropping and listening in. I mean, it's, it's super cool. It's super, super fun. So you can embed, you can, cur you can aggregate, curate, or embed content. But most importantly, you, we have to remember, how can you tell your story? You know, I gave you a bunch of tools. And this is, you know, what we're doing is we're, we want to tell the story as much as possible. So we always need to know who responds to what, what are you measuring, and most importantly, go do it. 
So that's all I have. I hope. I don't, how long on time? Anybody know? Yeah, you still have a lot of time. <laughs> started early, so you're oh, stuck right now. Okay. <laughs> questions, awesome. This is always a fear. I always say, anybody with questions, and it goes crickets. No one. So I'm glad we have one. Let's do this. All right. So creating content is not easy, but it's easier than getting an audience. So mm -hmm. it's really hard now to build an audience. So riff on that. <laughs> riff on that. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Can repeat okay. the question into the mic so everyone can hear? Okay, let me. Oh, what's the question? The question, the, the question is, it's easier to create content now than it is to build an audience for that content. The question is, what are your thoughts on building an audience in 2015 and 2016? Awesome, thank you. Great question. So I think the, the first thing to do is create good content. How are you going to broadcast out there? How can you leverage it? How can we go ahead and how can we be helpful? Uh, you know, how, how can you leverage your social platforms to start bringing people in? I think, the more, I think the more helpful you are, the more people will keep coming back and finding, and finding your content. I think that that's the number one thing for me is just be helpful, publish good stuff. I mean, it, it, it is difficult. I'm not going to, you know, there's no silk magic bullet. There's no magic formula. What works for one brand, what works for you, what works for somebody down there is not going to work for everybody. But I just think be consistent, be good, be helpful. I have a short memory span, so I'm not going to remember all these questions. So if you just ask it. Um, can you talk a little bit about the role of advertising in content? Ooh, that's a good question. And I don't know if I know the answer to that. I don't know. Or do you drive ads to your content? No. I don't drive any ads to my content. I don't try to generate any kind of revenue that way. I don't, um, any revenue generated through content is strictly through subject, being a subject matter expert, through helping people, through, uh, clients coming in and working. You know, I try not to worry about the ad side of the things because that's like a whole nother level of work and worry for me. <laughs> to be honest with you, right? So like, I'm not an affiliate marketer. Like affiliate guys would answer that question like, if we were at, you know, one of those affiliate summits, everybody's hand would be up how to do that stuff. Ben's talking about it at 3.30. What was that? Ben's talking about ad revenue at Perfect. Three thirty. Somebody will be able to help you better than I can. Sorry about that. Yeah. You need the microphone. Do I need to okay. Um, no, I thought we were going the other way on that. That was a great question. Yeah. Let's go the other way. On your content, are you paying to publish that Facebook ads, driving traffic to your content? Okay. Okay. If we want to spin it and go that way. Sure. I mean, if you have sponsored posts. Or if you want to do sponsored tweets, you know, absolutely. I mean, there are some situations where we do publish some videos and we do do some Facebook ads to drive people to that content. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it's, you can spend as much as you want on it or as little as you want on it and, you know, there's no guaranteed results. But yeah, I mean, that's an absolute strategy if that helps you. That helps that question, I don't know. Yep. Um, I don't know, it was a two-part question. Number one, are you familiar with Triber, and what do you think about Triber to help promote, or get other people promoting? I'm not familiar with Triber. Okay. So the question Triber, was, am I familiar with Triber? Triber's awesome. And I'm not familiar with Triber, uh, but Chris says Triber's awesome. I don't know, give it a go. You want to answer that? It? Who uses it? Yeah. Answer this question. Somebody answer this question. <laughs> so I'm going to hand this all to Chris. Chris will answer, answer this one. Go for it. <laughs> So if you don't know what Triber is, Triber allows you, you to find people and other people to find you uh, specifically based on content topics rather than who you are. So if you're writing about certain topics, what you do is you attach your RSS feed from your blog um, and that imports all of your content and then people can uh, essentially subscribe to you and get your content onto an internal feed that they get to see. So they get to see your articles 
and directly from within the Triber experience, they can republish your content. So what happens is, you'll wake up in the morning, if you wrote, let's say you wrote in the evening, you'll wake up the next morning and discover that 20 people you don't know have just sent out tweets to their audience about your content because they want to put fresh content onto their tweet stream. They don't want to write 20 new articles or 10 new articles, and so they're using your articles to send that out and look themselves. They look smart doing it, and of course you get additional traffic that way. Perfect. You can just turn it over then. You get the you get the cube though. Uh, uh, great question though. It's something. Yes. Push this is a beginner's class. I'm going to ask a stupid question. Excellent. I can answer those. Please. <laughs> we put a video out, and it, we got, we don't know why, but we got a lot of hits. But when I look at the analytics on it, it looks like everybody's looking at it for about 10 seconds and they're shutting it down. How do we, how do we build that better? So, so. Half a million hits. Half a million hits. You got a half a million hits. What's up? What was the content? What was it about? Uh, the uh, title, you'll figure it out. It's called The 13 Words You Can't Say About Hillary. <laughs> All right, well, so I guess that the question is how do we, so, so the question was he has a lot of hits on a video, but people are only watching it for 10 seconds at a time. How do we make people watch long, more? So I think that part of that is, you know, my question would be is, are you delivering what you promised them in the title within the first 10 seconds? Are you starting to say, these 13 words you can't say about Hillary. You know, and then from there, uh, how, how entertaining is it? You know, what we are all in the, the, uh, the infotainment business now, you know, as media companies. We have to keep people engaged. We have to, and maybe the drop off after about 10 seconds. And I applaud you for having analytics and looking at the analytics for it. You know, that's, that's perfect because now you know. So the next time you go and do a video, try to structure it a little bit differently. Try to structure the format differently. Try to deliver the message sooner. Try to spin the message to get a different message out there. What I would say to you is they're not receiving what they thought they were going to get within the first 10 seconds, so they're dipping. They're getting out. So I would, I would try to look at that and not being familiar with your video, but once I leave, I will be familiar with it. <laughs> Not a political guy, but anyway, funny is funny, so screw it. But I would go ahead and I would look at that. Thank you. Did I? That wasn't a stupid question. That was a fantastic question. That's excellent. Any more questions like that I can really answer? No. Go for it. Um, when you're creating content, you list it up a whole big to-do list, and we all have a huge to-do list and stuff. Do you, as the owner or the you know the the starter of the content, do you farm it out and how do you make decisions to say, okay, I'm going to have this person in my organization mm -hmm. do this, this person in my organization do this? Well, I think that you know, part of that, when we first started Marketing Press TV, what we did was I had a video a videographer come into the office and we'd film like three or four videos all in one afternoon. And the number one question I got by the videos were, do you own any other shirts? <laughs> because I would film all these videos back to back to back to back. And I said, then I got better at it and I brought a change of clothes. Dumb me, right? <laughs> so I did that. And I found that. I found, and yes, I do do laundry, if anyone has to say anything about that. But what I found was uh, having somebody like that made it too rigid for me, right? So the videographer I used, Ida, was fantastic, but he got me started, right? And then I realized that, you know what, I spent a lot of time thinking of these topics and thinking about what I was going to say. And then when I went to the iPhone method on the tripod or a suction cup in my car, whenever anything popped in my head, I could just go ahead and do it. So it was cool, and I really liked it that way. The second part of the question, like how do you designate somebody within your organization to do that, is I want to play to people's strengths. If somebody likes to do that, let them do it. You know what I mean? If, if, somebody, if Jeremy in my organization is really, really good at speaking on camera, go for it. You know, if Kevin in my organization is really, really good at writing, let him do it. You know what I mean? And let people, let other people tell your brand story within your organization. Because like I said, everybody's gonna have a little bit of a different spin, and your story may not connect with your new audience, but their story may. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that it, it's it, you can attack it from kind of both sides. Did I answer that? Yes, you did. Okay. Thank you. Yes.
What's an example of some content that you've published that's been received as being very helpful? Uh, I published this video, 13 words about Hillary you can't say. <laughs> <laughs> So things like that, what we do at Marketing Press TV has been pretty successful, where what we do is we go out there and we just do quick videos about questions that people like you guys ask all the time. So anytime somebody like yourself asks a question, like in a setting like this, you can be assured that other people are thinking about it, searching for it, or wondering. So some of the stuff that we've done, like, you know, uh, good pl best plugins for develop development environments. Uh, three goals of content. You know, that's one I always keep going back for. You know, those videos are really, really well received. Anyone else? Yes. Right. And yeah. Then, so um, I have a question about like what what do you tell your clients when they come to you, like wrapped around this axle of I need to learn how to use YouTube or make a podcast and they don't have a marketing plan. Mm -hmm. They've made their content yeah. into a technical problem. Yeah. Wow, yeah, it happens, doesn't it, right? I think that everything starts with a strategy. You know, you have to know why you're doing it. Like a lot of clients that we work with, if they can't tell us why we're getting, uh, you know, going down this road together, and whether it's building a new WordPress site, whether it's, you know, uh, advanced functionality they want on their site, whether it's creating, creating videos, if they can't tell us why to do it, why they want it, why they're doing it, then it's worthless. So the first thing we start with, we start with the goals. You know, I always ask them, what are we trying to accomplish? You know, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, today's a great day to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> you know, many people in this room actually do. <laughs> the real world is not like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's just like, why are we doing it? We're doing it for one of those three things. We're doing it for search and subject matter expertise, conversion, or creating a community around your product, service, or brand. If you go back to those three points and you kind of use that as your as the litmus, litmus test, and then you can start helping them think strategically. Because all they know is they were drinking last night and somebody said, hey, you need a YouTube channel. <laughs> or, hey, you need Twitter. You know, how many times do you hear that? How many clients, you know, how many times do you hear a client like, I need Facebook. <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> Tell me, what does that mean? Right? right? So, yeah, I mean, start with a strategy. Start with something small. Don't say strategy to them. Jesus Christmas, don't say that. Because what's going to happen is you're going to scare them. They're just going to run away. I totally want to scare them if they're not ready. Well, then, well, well, then you need to use bigger words than strategy. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, say, what do you want to accomplish? Why? Why, why do you want to do this? Well, because they want to get more customers. Okay, so that's conversion. That's a conversion point. Yeah, yeah. Bam. Start talking to them about that. You know, well, there was a book, right? Start with the why. Simon, Simon, Simon. Simon. Yeah, that guy. Yes. Is there another question in back? No? You want to ask? I don't know. How did you start? Just blogging? How did I start? I started just blogging. So I started, uh, Marketing Press started as actually a content development agency. What was your why? Why? Oh, that's a whole other talk show. Why did I start it? I started because I was really passionate about content, and I kept getting fired from all these other jobs. <laughs> True story, I started Marketing Press $400 in a laptop, and that was six years ago. And what happened was, I was always a square peg in a round hole, trying to do things right for the client to help them, but it didn't always fit into the agency model. So I kept getting fired. I got fired three times in 18 months in Phoenix. And Phoenix is a small market, right? So like everybody knows everybody, and they're like, you're not gonna hire that guy, are you? And it was also the worst time in the economy. And six years ago, it was easier for me to start a company than it was to find a job. It's a true story. I tell the story at length. I was on Entrepreneur on Fire, uh, the John Lee Dumas podcast, no, uh, no, episode 833, I tell the story at length. And my why was because I was really passionate about helping clients achieve their goals. I was really, I wanted to do that. We, we pivoted into a WordPress agency because we kept launching all these good content strategies on these shitty sites. So we said, well, let's take control of this. Now if we can launch a good site for these people, we at least have a fighting chance for the content to stand out. So that was my why. 
Yeah. Anyone else? I'm going to download that podcast. 833. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Also, my mom will be so happy. Oh. Somebody said that. <laughs> All right, you guys have been great. Thank you. I don't know how much time you have, but I'm going to go uh, pack up my laptop. I'm going to go to the Genius, or, oh, it used to be called the Genius Bar. It's the Happiness Bar now. Yeah. That's how I've been around a little bit. And if anybody else wants to talk about anything in detail, just come on over and let's do it. So thanks. You guys have been great.